销售低服务区，在速或可疑行为，请。Hello, friends, and good morning from Tokyo, babes. I cannot even believe that I'm actually here right now. I don't know if it's just the sleep deprivation, but this feels surreal. This is my first time back in Japan since I moved out of Tokyo, and it's only my first day, and I haven't even really gone out and explored yet. But it kind of feels like I never left. It feels like I picked up like right where I left off. But oh my goodness, it was such a journey to get here. So at my connecting flight from San Francisco to Tokyo, we boarded the plane and actually waited in there for two hours because of the high winds. But of course, everything worked out. I am here in the Airbnb. People did warn me that going through customs in the Japanese airport was going to take a long time. I think it took me a total of like two to three hours. So by the time I finally made it into Tokyo and found my Airbnb, I was so exhausted. I had a great night's sleep and I actually woke up at a normal time and I'm feeling great so far. So fingers crossed that I won't really be experiencing jet lag that much. So yeah, I'm gonna be spending this first week in Tokyo completely on my own. It's a little solo trip. And then my sister and her boyfriend are gonna meet up with me exactly a week from now. I just wanted to have a nice week to myself because if I'm flying all the way here, I wanna get as much time in Japan as I can. But I thought first I'd go ahead and give you guys a quick little Airbnb tour. All right. So first in any Japanese apartment is the genkan where you take off your shoes and right next to the genkan is the bathroom. This is one of those small Tokyo unit style bathrooms with the toilet and shower right next to each other. From the bathroom we have a nice large frosted window so now we're entering the kitchen area and believe it or not this is considered a pretty decent sized kitchen for Tokyo. Like in most Japanese apartments you would have the sink and then a single stove right here with absolutely zero counter space so I feel like I'm really living large right now <laughs> and through the kitchen we enter the bedroom have a little desk area to eat and do some work the only thing that's a little peculiar is that the bed is right against the closet I feel like it would make a lot more sense to have the bed facing vertical this way so there's space to get into the closet all right babes so this new layout just makes so much more sense to me now i actually have access to both sides of the closet okay so i'm finally dressed it took me long enough <laughs> i always feel so much pressure to look really put together when i'm in tokyo because everyone here always looks so nice but anyway i was thinking of heading to uniqlo today because i really need some new socks and i was also thinking of going to a cafe and i saw that in ginza there is a uniqlo cafe Let's go.
Hello babes, we made it back home. So when I was living in Japan, one of my coworkers introduced me to the 7-Eleven macaron ice creams. And ever since I've been absolutely hooked and they always come out with new flavors. And it just so happens that this season they have an Earl Grey tea macaron ice cream. This looks delightful. I'm gonna pop this sucker right in my mouth. <laughs> what? It's like a light peach. Ooh, let's get into it, yeah. Oh my god. That is fragrant. The texture of this is ridiculous. Since today was my first actual full day, it really made me miss living in Japan. Going shopping, getting sushi, going to the convenience stores. It's just all so good. I'm never gonna stop coming to Japan. It's a lot more fun when you're on vacation. Not as much fun when you're working here. <laughs> but anyway, from Uniqlo, I got one of their seamless bras. They are so stinking comfortable. I'm obsessed. I've been wanting one for so long. And my main mission was just to get socks so i got a couple different pairs and then from the drugstore i just got two can make products i got the can make mermaid sunscreen gel and i'm almost out of my powder so i just got this one this is the can make silky loose moist powder it had a really good reviews so that's all i got today because it's just day one i didn't want to go overboard i'm going to do a majority of my shopping towards the end of the trip because i just don't want to weigh my luggage down since we will be traveling throughout japan it's not even 9 p.m but i'm exhausted i'm so surprised i'm doing really well with the jet lag so i'm gonna call it a night and i'll see you guys tomorrow bye good morning friends and welcome to day two of being in tokyo so another day another cafe hop i really want to go to the starbucks reserve i think it's in like nakameguro area i've actually never been there before so i'm not really sure what to expect but i really need some coffee also really need some food oh also because it's cherry blossom season every year they come out with a collection of like sakura tumblers and cups and mugs so i'm hoping that we'll be able to find it but they honestly sell out so fast i'm not sure if there's going to be anything left but Let's just go check. <laughs> besties so i'm not even a huge coffee geek but this was one of the coolest most immersive experiences i loved seeing the baristas doing their thing they looked like mad scientists and i was eating it up <laughs> It honestly served as entertainment while I was waiting in that really long line to order. <laughs> so I have finally been summoned. I got a cherry blossom macchiato and a strawberry pastry. I wanted to take it upstairs to explore a little bit and to find some seating, but y'all, this reserve is the largest Starbucks in Japan. It's four entire floors, and the first floor is the cafe and bakery, the second floor serves Tivana, and the third floor has a cocktail bar. And I bet this outdoor balcony is gonna have a stunning view of Nakameguro River once the cherry blossoms have fully bloomed. But regardless, it was such a gorgeous balcony, it was giving me all the Tokyo cafe vibes I was craving. And not to be dramatic, but this coffee and pastry exceeded my expectations, like they tasted like they were imported straight from Italy. The Starbucks was absolutely delicious, and I saw my very first fully bloomed cherry blossom tree. So I'm walking 
walking through the back streets right now and I want to avoid the crowd so instead of going to Shibuya, I think I'm going to walk towards Ebisu today. <laughs> morning from Tokyo. It is day four. Yesterday I didn't film because the temperature just dropped drastically. It was in the 40s. I did not pack clothes for that. It literally rained the entire day from morning till night. So I ended up just using that day to edit here in the Airbnb. But apparently we have two days of sunshine. So I want to take advantage. Don't really have any set plans. I just first want to go to a cute cafe, get some lunch, maybe go to a park afterwards. And I don't know, just kind of explore and see where I end up. So let's Head out. Y'all, I did not realize there is such a beautiful park near the Airbnb. I'm looking at a waterfall right now. This is crazy. So it turns out this park is within walking distance to Rapongi Hills. That is going to be our next destination. Regular vending machines. Beer. Japanese bathrooms they have the sinks but then they have a separate area just to do your makeup <laughs> Hey bitches! Sorry, I know that the vlog has been all over the place, but I'm officially about to pick up my little sister and her boyfriend from the airport! And yes, we are currently in a brand new Airbnb, but I think I'll be showing that in the next vlog, so make sure you watch! Super excited to not be alone in Tokyo anymore, so let's go pick them up and I'll see you guys in a bit! Bye! 